Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at one of the most iconic telescopes of all time and one of the ones most commonly recommended to beginners, the 6-inch Dobsonian reflector. Well, first of all, what is it? Well, it's an astronomical telescope designed for looking up at the night sky. There is a mirror in the back here that gathers light. It diverts the light into the secondary mirror here, which is at a diagonal, diverts the light out into the eyepiece, and this is where you look. To change magnifications, you change eyepieces. So why do we need a telescope at all? Well, it turns out the human eye can only gather so much light. Your eye can only open to about six or seven millimeters. Can't see a lot. This telescope here gathers much more light, six inches worth. Therefore, it can see much fainter objects. So you might ask yourself, well, why do we have to stop at six inches? Why don't we get a 10 inch or a 12 inch or a 16 inch or something bigger? Well, you can, and many people do. The thing we find is the bigger the telescope you buy, the less motivation you're gonna have to take it out long term. In other words, the limiting factor isn't the telescope, it's, it's you. One thing I like to say is that if you have a 10 inch telescope, it will sh people tend to use those long term about half as often as an eight inch. Remember, the telescope that shows you the most is the one that you use the most. So a smaller telescope that gets used more often will show you more long-term than a bigger one that sits in the garage. Okay, so this telescope is on what's called a Dobsonian base. It's a fancy word, all it means is it's on a base that goes up and down and it goes left and right. It's named after West Coast astronomer John Dobson, who first popularized this design many years ago. So Dobsonians have been around for quite some time. Up until about 25 years ago, most of them that you saw were homemade. These commercial units have only been around since, you know, about the year 2000. 20 to 25 years ago, these things started to get popular. And now they are the default recommendations for beginners. So again, a six inch has been commonly considered an ideal starter scope. These days, expectations have gotten a little bit higher, and many people, and myself included, are recommending the larger brother, the 8-inch, instead. You're getting a little more light-gathering capability, but it's still relatively portable. I haven't actually played with a 6-inch Dobsonian for a while, so I thought I'd revisit this and see what we find. So this product has been around for quite some time. You see these things everywhere. Through the years, it's gone through some changes. Orion will change the accessories that come with it, uh, check their website for what they're currently supplying with them. So through the years, they have made, you know, again, some changes, and the cynical people out there will say that they're cheapening the product over time. I think in most cases, those changes that they made have not been serious, with one exception. For example, there used to be a sort of a tear-shaped plastic knob at the bottom here where you could grab onto and move it. They deleted that. I don't think that's a huge loss. I never use that thing anyway. I have one of those knobs on my six inch star blast and I never use it. I just grab the front of the tube and move it. Second thing they did was there used to be an eyepiece tray down here with some holes in it. You can put some eyepieces down. You can store them. Unfortunately, all that thing did was encourage your eyepieces to do and fog over in the dark. I don't think losing that thing has been a big deal. One other change they made is they used to put a 6x30 optical finder here. Sometime a few years ago they changed and they are now putting a red dot reflex sight. Depending on what side of the fence you're on, that one might actually be considered an improvement. Some people actually like these things. And in the event that you miss the optical finder, there's plenty of room here. You can actually drill a hole in here, get a finder base, and put an optical finder on here, and you can get one of each. But the one change they made that really concerns me, sometime in the mid-2000s, they changed from a metal focuser to this plastic one. It looks like it's metal, but it's actually painted plastic. So the problem is this is a long tube and you're gonna be carrying it around in the dark. You're gonna be tired at the end of the night. You're at, at some point you are going to bang this against something. Some part of the tube is gonna get banged against you know, a door jam or the hatchback of your car, something like that. You better hope you don't bang this and damage it because these focusers are becoming more difficult to find. Ironically, Orion started life you know, many years ago as a spare parts supplier, and you could get these, but even today, Orion doesn't sell very many spare parts, so be careful with that. 
Okay, so what can you see with a six-inch telescope like this? Well, it turns out quite a lot. In fact, for a motivated observer under dark enough skies, you could potentially never run out of things to see with a six-inch reflector. I would start with the moon. If Jupiter and Saturn are up, you can see those. Then you can move on to the deep sky objects, these so-called Messier objects. There are 110 of those. And if you're, again, if you have a good dark sky, you could potentially see untold numbers of clusters and galaxies over your lifetime. So a common question I get when somebody gets one of these, they, it comes in the mail, they put it together, they're all excited, and then what do I do now? <laughs> yes, this thing doesn't exactly come with a lot of computers or electronics or pointing aids or anything like that, you kind of have to meet it halfway. So it helps to know a little bit about the night sky before you start looking through it. Again, start with the moon, it's easy to find. Planets are also easy. What you do is there is a red dot finder here. If you have one of these, it projects a red dot at infinity. So what you do is you get behind the telescope like this. It's actually on the wrong side. The eyepiece is on the wrong side there. but. Once you have the red dot on, say, the moon, check your work here. When you first start off doing this, you're going to be off a little bit. That's perfectly normal. You'll get better over time. You can do this with any object in the night sky. For example, if you have one of these, you have a planisphere, you can dial in the time and the date. This one has most of the major showpiece objects on it. Just kind of line up what you see in the sky. Use the red dot finder. Check your work. You also could use one of these, a printed atlas. This one has more detail on it. You can also use an app on your phone if you're so inclined. So again, when you first start doing this, you're going to be off a little bit. That is perfectly normal. I still must make mistakes too. If it's not in the eyepiece, what you do is you very gently pan back and forth in a circle to see if you're close. And if you do this for a while and you turn out, it turns out it's not in the eyepiece, start over again with the finder and do it again. Keep doing it, eventually, again, you will get better at this. So no discussion of a six inch Dobsonian is complete without a comparison to the eight. This is the X-T8, the larger brother of the X-T6. The eight is the one that gets recommended all the time to beginners by a lot of people, including myself. These days I lean people towards the eight if for no other reason that it has a two inch metal focuser as opposed to the aforementioned inch and a quarter plastic focuser. You know, about 10 years ago, I tried to go on a project to get the industry to stop using these plastic focusers, and I tried to phrase it in such a way that the manufacturers would pay attention. I said that I would pay more, and of course it went nowhere. So again, the eight gets recommended the most often, but there are reasons to get the six. First of all, you're gonna save a little bit of money. Second of all, it's a little bit lighter and easier to carry around. You want to be careful there because almost all of the weight savings is in the tube itself. The bases weigh pretty much the same, and as you, as you can see, they're pretty much the same size, so they're going to take up about the same amount of space in your house. And also, uh, you can just tilt these things up like this, whatever the diameter of the base is. You can put this in the back of a closet if you wanted to. Okay, so one of the most common questions I get is, what do I get if I buy an 8 as opposed to a 6? What's better about it? What can I see that's different? Whichever one you get, do keep in mind that the six inch is an F8, the eight inch is an F6. So they have the same focal length. Put the same eyepiece in both telescopes and they will both yield the same magnification. The only difference is the eight inch will be a little bit brighter. The thing that everybody quotes in their marketing literature is that an eight inch telescope gathers 56% more light than a six inch. Okay, that's interesting. What does that translate into practically? Well, you can't really see what that looks like. Another common statistic that's given is that an eight inch will see about a half a magnitude deeper than a six. Again, very interesting, but I'm not sure how much that helps you. So this is what I did. I went outside with both of these and I looked at galaxies M81 and M82 in Ursa Major. This picture, by the way, was taken with the Skywatcher EVOSTAR 100 ED and I tried to make this adjustment mathematically in Photoshop, but I wound up just doing it by feel. I had the telescope side by side, outside, pointed at the same object, and I used the same eyepiece. In this case, I used my Teleview 24 millimeter panoptic, and I adjusted it to see what I saw. Keep in mind, there are differences in 
people's vision, and there's also going to be differences in your observing location, so this could be off a little bit. So the question is, is that a lot? I don't know. Some people will say yes, some people will say no. Here's what I found about human perception. When you go from the 6 to the 8, that's not typically when you notice things. It's only after you've lived with the 8 for a while, you go back to the 6, and there's a bit of a sensation that someone has put up some sunglasses on you. Whichever one you choose, you're not really going to go wrong here. These are both terrific beginner's telescopes. Okay, so through the years, Orion has had a number of variations on this product. They have a blue-tubed version, which is sort of a deluxe package. It's got some upgraded parts on it. They have the gunmetal gray version that has the push to in telescope electronic digital setting circles on it. You know me, I just get the plain one. But yes, I do know some of you out there who collect these things. Another common question I get is, there are a number of other 6-inch Dobsonian models out there. Do I recommend those? The answer is yes, I do. They're all good. I can't think of a currently made 6-inch Dob on the market today that I can't recommend. So I hate listing these because I'm going to leave somebody off here that deserves to be here, but if you find a 6-inch Dob out there from Apertura, Antares, Zoomel, Skywatcher, Explorer Scientific, GSO if you're outside the United States, and others, yes, those are recommended as well. I'll also note that to gain a competitive advantage, some of those brands I just mentioned are starting to put metal focusers on these daubs. Check those out. You're going to pay a little more, but you're, you know, to get a metal focuser, it might be worth it. Another common question I get is, what kind of accessories should I buy with the telescope? And my usual answer is, don't buy anything. There's plenty here to keep you busy for a long time. Sometimes people want to run out and buy expensive eyepieces. At the beginner stage, the eyepiece is rarely your bottleneck. Again, use what you have, and eventually you'll know when you need something else. I find these days I have to stop people from spending money. Somebody will buy one of these and say, yeah, I got a lot of money left over. And I'll say, yeah, I think that's terrific. It doesn't mean you have to spend it. So there you have it, an overview of the Orion X-T6 6-inch Dobsonian, an ideal telescope for a beginner. The only thing preventing me from giving this a 100% shout it from the rooftops recommendation is that plastic focuser. That's a decision you're going to have to make for yourself. So do you have one of these? What have you seen with it? What are your experiences, good and bad? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.